The most successful businesses in the world have multiple revenue streams and real estate investing is no different than any other business. There's a variety of ways you can make money in real estate, but all of them break down into one of four categories. In this video, I'll break down those four categories and how you can maximize profit in each area. If you're making money in four different ways, you can get to your goals much faster, achieving financial freedom, financial independence, and having cash flow for life. Stick around until the end of the video where I'll share a tip that will allow you to scale your real estate portfolio quickly with these four money-making strategies. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help a thousand people create a million dollars in net worth with real estate investing. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. The first way rental properties make money is through positive cash flow. Positive cash flow is super simple. Take your monthly revenue and subtract your expenses and what is left over is your cash flow. For instance, if you had $1,300 a month coming in in rent and $1,000 of expenses, your positive cash flow would be $300 per month. The biggest mistake I see with new investors is that they are not including all the correct categories of expenses when they calculate cash flow. For all of the correct categories you should be using, check out this video right here when you're done with this video. The second way rental properties make money is through mortgage pay down. Some investors own properties outright with no mortgage on them. I'm not a big fan of that. The majority of investors will leverage other people's money, in other words, the bank's money, in order to grow their portfolio faster. When you get a mortgage from a bank and it's amortized over a period of time, usually 25 years, the bank calculates your monthly mortgage payments to pay off that loan over those 25 years. Those payments are broken down into two categories, principal and interest. Interest is the cost to service the loan. That's what we have to pay the bank. Principal is the amount that the loan gets paid down each month. So if you have a $300,000 property and you've mortgaged it at 80% loan to value, meaning you've put a 20% down payment, your mortgage would be $240,000. That $240,000 mortgage would have a payment of $1,056 per month with a 2.3% interest rate. Of that $1,056 payment, 459 of that would be going towards paying interest and 597 would be going to pay down the principal of the loan. The difference between mortgage pay down and cash flow is that this mortgage pay down money isn't available to us each month unless we have a readvanceable home equity line of credit attached to the mortgage. But let's assume this is a standard mortgage. Just because this isn't cash in our pocket though, it doesn't mean we can't count it as profit. Our rental property is still paying down the mortgage every month, so it's building equity and therefore this needs to be calculated in how we make money with rental properties. The third way that rental properties make money is through market appreciation or natural appreciation as it's sometimes called. What you buy the property for versus what the property value is currently or what it is being sold for. For instance, if you bought a property at $200,000 five years ago and then sold it today for $300,000, that would be $100,000 in market appreciation. Similarly, if you bought for $200,000 five years ago, but similar properties in your area are selling for $300,000 today, you have $100,000 in equity in that property because what you paid for it and what it's worth are different. Similar to mortgage pay down, equity is not actually cash in our pocket till we sell our properties. We can realize it by doing a cash out refinance, but most of the time we're not realizing equity. It's just sitting there in the property and when we sell it, that's when we get to actualize it. If you wanna learn how to find the best properties and up and coming neighborhoods, you can sign up for my masterclass at darrenvoros.com. I have one final live interactive session coming up and then I'll be moving to recorded versions. So if you were considering furthering your real estate education, now is the time to take action. Use the promo code YouTube for $200 off any of my trainings. The fourth way rental properties can make profit is through what we call forced appreciation. The most popular way to force appreciation is by doing a renovation or rehab as my American friends call it, or by making improvements to the property. If we do the right renovations to a property, our return on those renovations can be higher than what we paid to have those renovations completed. This is how we're able to force the property up in value. For example, kitchen and bathroom renovations can often yield a higher return than what they cost to complete. If you bought a property for $300,000 and spent $50,000 putting in a new kitchen and bathroom, it's possible that you could increase the value of the property beyond the $50,000 you spent. If the property is now worth $375,000, you've created $25,000 in forced appreciation by doing the renovation. Now be careful here, just because you're putting money into a kitchen and bathroom renovation doesn't mean you'll get it back out. There's a limit and you have to know the right kinds of renovations to do to your property. 
I've seen many novice investors over renovate and then it takes years to recoup the money they've spent on renovations. As promised, I wanted to share a tip with you on how you can quickly scale and build your portfolio. The best way to do this is to find properties where you can capture all four of these profit categories. Look for properties in up and coming areas where there's opportunity for market appreciation. Look for properties that you can add value through forced appreciation. And lastly, make sure your properties have positive cash flow. This will make or break you as a real estate investor. If you have positive cash flow and the market value drops, it allows you to hold onto the property and wait until the market value comes back up. In the meantime, your tenants are paying down your mortgage and you're still making money each month. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments section below where you're investing and how many of these categories you're taking advantage of in your rental properties. If you have questions related to real estate investing, you can leave those in the comments section as well. You can also head on over to my Facebook and Instagram page and give me a follow. I post there regularly. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on Tuesday.